Exploring the great outdoors is a great form of exercise for anybody, really. Whether you are taking a simple walk, maybe a hike, or spending days on the trail backpacking, there is one underlying thing you need to be aware of. How you take care of your feet will determine how you'll feel on the trail. And all that starts with the shoes that you pick. If you are new to hiking, this is a must-see story so you can avoid the strains, pains, and the blisters to stay happy on your feet. So to learn more, let's join Jim Holt of the Arizona Hiking Shack as he puts our feet on the right path for the right footwear. Let's join him now. So you're thinking about getting out on the trail and having a little exercise, maybe shed a few pounds, maybe just do an adventure, get back in touch with nature. Well, before you do that, you need to educate yourself because Mother Nature is not going to reward you if you're stupid or ignorant as you go out on the trail. And that means from the selection of your gear as well. And the most important thing that you're going to purchase is going to be your boots. If you're going to hike, you're going to need hydration packs and things like that. You're going to need a first aid kit. All of that's important. But this is the biggest purchase you're going to make to get you out on the trail because it's going to be the difference between a nice time, a good adventure that I want to slap on those boots and go back out again the next day and accelerate my heart rate and get sweaty and have a great time. Or it can be the difference between I can't wait to take these off and don't you ever think about going out on the trail again. Well, that's because typically you've made a poor choice in the boots. So what you want to do is come into a store where they're going to take the time, as you as the customer, to measure your feet, see what kind of foot you have, talk to you. Hey, what kind of hikes are you doing? Are you looking to do backpacking trips? Or are you just going to go up the peak and hike a couple of miles, two or three hours, and get back in my car and go home and have a great time? Well, for that, you can get by with a very light duty shoe. <clears throat> Typically, a shoe like this is going to have an EVA midsole in it. It's going to be very light on the foot, but you're looking for something what we call torsional rigidity. And what I mean by that, that there's some resistance as you flex the toe box of the boot around, bending it back, because imagine that's your foot inside there. Now, if you're looking for something with not quite as much, you'll feel that as you bend the shoe back. You can feel less resistance. Now, both of these shoes that I've shown you would be good for hikes of, oh, say, five miles, even some cases, 10. Uh, but that's going to determine how they fit on your foot. And that's another reason you want to come into a store to decide, OK, this shoe that I've picked out, now that we've talked about it, yeah, this is right. I'm not be doing any big backpacking trips or anything with this. So I'm not looking for a stouter boot, which if that was the case, you'd look over to a backpacking boot that has a different midsole in it that's PU which is going to be denser and longer to break in, probably four to six weeks. Back to a light duty shoe, though. This is something, if you're just going to be on short hikes, like I said, that's going to stabilize your foot. You want to have ventilation in it, help keep your foot dry so that it doesn't get wet and clammy in there. And that can cause blisters and hot spots. Now, with a light duty shoe, you're going to want to make sure that the toe box is right for your foot. With that, you have a lot of shoes that have a more narrow profile on the toe box versus a large. And that makes the difference in the comfort on the trail. Because if your toes are crammed in to this toe box that's too tight, you're going to have toenail problems, uh, blisters on the tips of your toes because there's not enough room in there. The tops of your feet are going to be rubbed raw. So once again, you want to go through with someone who's going to walk you through that. Have you go up an incline ramp. Most good hiking stores are going to have some type of incline ramp that lets you simulate going up hill on the balls of your feet, which will allow you to check for the heel cup to make sure your foot's stabilized in there. And there's no rubbing and causing any problems that can maybe cause you to have an accident on the trail. They also want to have you go on that ramp to go downhill to make sure that you've probably purchased a shoe that's a half to maybe even a full size larger than your regular street shoe because that's going to allow for your foot to swell and expand and it's also as you go downhill that there's room for your toes to go forward into the shoe without jamming and causing hot spots and blisters. Now if you're choosing a shoe that where you want to get out on slick rock and boulders and do scrambling I'd recommend getting what we call an approach shoe. That's typically going to be something that has a different tread and a lug on the bottom for comfort and traction on the trail. 
Keep in mind, any of these shoes can be used for any activity. It's just that if you take a backpacking boot to do short hikes, your feet are going to get fatigued more, and it's really overkill for what you're typically doing. But that's you as the consumer. You can make that choice if you decide that's what you need for your comfort level. The next thing in terms of getting out on the trail, you want to pick a sock that's going to be right for your foot. And why is that important? Because it's your foot and you're going to be out there on the trail. And the, picking the wrong sock with the wrong amount of wool or too much wool, a quarter sock versus when you need a crew, can be the difference between chafing, hot spots, blisters, and those type of issues. And the best way if you know you don't want any wool, you're looking for a synthetic sock, shop, sock. So you would ask the shop, what do you have that has no wool? Typically, they're going to have socks that have acrylics, dry-release polyesters, nylons, and spandex in them. Those are also wicking properties that help keep your foot dry. But you determine that yourself. And the best way to do that is buy one pair of socks, wear them, and see how they perform for you. If you don't like them, try another sock until you find the right one for your foot. Aftermarket orthotics will also help stabilize your foot, help you have more support, and will prevent pronation and supination problems, which cause you to be out of alignment, cause the shoes and boots to wear faster. And these are, should be purchased. Typically, I advise a consumer to purchase these at the time that you're getting fitted with the boots, because you want to fit yourself just like you did the boot. You don't want to just pull these off the wall and run them in because they're typically a trim to fit. You use the insert that's in the shoe to trim off the excess so they're snug and will stabilize your foot. Memory foam in some to help you with custom molding, more aggressive arches or less aggressive arches. That's where you get through the fit with the boot fitter in the shop that you've picked out to help you. And keep in mind, it's all about your feet and that's what I do at a shop when somebody comes in because you're the one that's going out on the trail and I want you to have a good time. And that doesn't happen when you've decided to compromise the boots or gone to some place where the only thing they do is say, here's a tin, I'll come back and check on you in a while, tell me how it feels. That's not going to work. What you need to do is take the time, try on at least three or four boots, even if the first one is the best thing you've ever had on your feet. Because remember, the right boot is going to make the choice between having a good trail experience and maybe the difference between, how shall I say, Nirvana and Hades as you go along on the trail. Keep that in mind and purchase the right boot. And typically, the trails will wind right up through the clouds for you, and you're ready to go out the next day and have a good time.